Jericho. So he's very clearly linking the inheritance of the Israelites to the obedience of the word of God. Very clear and to the point, don't go left, don't go right. And I wish I had time to talk about how obedience opens doors that disobedience will close. Moses' disobedience meant that it was Joshua leading them into the promised land and not him. Amen? Amen. So we need to seek God's face. We need to keep his commands. And then lastly, we need to speak God's word. And this is my favorite because in verse 8, it instructs Joshua and the Israelites to keep God's command as an integral part of how they are speaking. And it says, this, this, book, of, uh, let's read it. this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So even for today's Christian, it's always key to keep in mind that to keep God's word and godly words coming out of your mouth. It is all about your confession. Proverbs 18 and 21 reminds us that death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. The things that we say have power over the fruit that we bear in this life. Okay, we speak our own self-fulfilling prophecies. The instruction to Joshua was to speak the law and meditate on it as a means of making his way prosperous and then as a means of having good success faith comes by hearing and maybe you need to start talking to yourself hearing speak it say it out loud even Habakkuk 2 says write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he would run who reads it for the vision is yet for an appointed time but at the end it will speak and it will not lie when you voice the visions and promises of God then there are many that will be able to hold you and God accountable for what he has said. Moses answered daily to the children of Israel for the promises that God had given him. And in the end, they came to pass. So you need to speak his word, okay? And just as Joshua, the promise and the inheritance was not only for those who crossed into the promised land physically, but it's also for those of us now who are crossing into the promised land spiritually. Let me calm down. <laughs> And uh, I, I would be remiss if, if I didn't share, bring, bring it home by sharing a little bit about me. And uh, you see, I asked God yesterday, I said, how are you going to have me up there talking about believing in your promise? I, I just don't understand because over the last few years, I've been hanging on to the promises of God for a variety of things, business, success, prosperity, relationships, all of that good stuff, ministry and everything. And I felt the stings of reprimand when I've begun to turn from the, to the left or to the right. And so sometimes I've had to just refocus and get back on track. Amen. And so God, yesterday he told me, he said, tell you, I'm telling you like I told Moses, Tell them I am sent me. I am the one who knows what he's saying. So I am sent me today to tell you that even standing here right now, hallelujah, is a fulfillment of promise. God gave me this sermon about three and a half years ago, and he told me it would be my first sermon. I didn't want to preach it. I thought he would give me a brand new word. But he said this is what I had to bring. And while some of the nuances of it have changed, the reality is that God had to test it in me hallelujah and that he had to say you know I need you to be able to speak the truth about what you're about to tell these folks and let them know it's true in this moment I mean I feel like Kelly Clarkson on American Idol when she won and she said a moment like this some people wait a lifetime hallelujah because when God fulfills his promises to you it just releases something in the spirit God releases a joy and a rest and a peace hallelujah that's like no other and beyond the high that you feel oh glory beyond that high beyond the high that you feel God gets the glory because when God fulfills his promises pastor when God fulfills his promises then it says to every person that I've said something to every family member every friend every person that I've given a profession of faith of calling who has watched this promise tarry in my life that they have been able to see that the witness of God is true that if he says something that he will do it and he will make it come to pass hallelujah believe me I know what I'm saying when I say to you that you have to just stop in the middle of it and I know what it's like oh hallelujah thank you Jesus Hallelujah. 
I know how hard it is to stop in the middle of your fleshy tantrum and your tears and stop and say, I believe you, God. I believe you for what you said. I know how frustrating and I know how cliche it sounds to say that I've had to continually say to myself, those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles and run and not be weary and walk and not faint. I know how it feels to know that your life does not match what God promised and you have to still hang in there, not lose heart and not lose sight of the promise. I still in here knowing that I'm supposed to be prosperous, but I'm struggling to keep the lights on in my house. I'm trying to tell you I know I'm supposed to be married, but I'm as single as the day is long, and I know God has said that I'm going to have some children, amen, but the only child that I have right now is a 10-year-old cat named Simba, and I'm 33 years old, and I know that he has promised me that my family would be saved, but my father and the rest of them just finished celebrating right Ramadan, amen. In the midst of all of this, I have to keep saying to myself, though it tarry, it will come to pass. And in the midst of all this, I have to speak God's word saying that I know that I'm not going to grow weary in well-doing. Hallelujah. Because if I do not lose heart, hallelujah, they will come to harvest. Hallelujah. I have to stand on the fact that God is not a man that he should lie. He is not a man. And God's word is is bond. It means that every day I have to seek God's face. I have to keep his commands and I have to speak his word, confessing to you and anybody else who will hear that God is a promise keeper. His word is bond. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, somebody shout about it.